Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. This week we got another program from requested off the internet. Uh, a friend uh, had some questions about owls uh, last week and he said, hey, that'd be a really good idea for a, a show program. So today the intention of this program is just to give you kind of a brief overview of the owls in our area. I could do a whole program easily on any one of these species and we may do that in the future, but today's idea is just to kind of get you through the kind of owls that we have here and in a particular interest is if they may nest in your yard or if you can get them to nest in your yard or in your area. So uh, first and foremost, I'll start with the king of the nighttime world, undisputed heavyweight champion, as I call him, the flying tigers, the great horned owl. Um, this is a ferocious bird, folks. I mean, they do eat everything from, you know, small mammals and birds and uh, to, uh, skunks and uh, wild turkeys, birds that are far larger than themselves. Um, these things are ferocious and they do, uh, they, they do attack and kill lots of things out there, which is their role in the environment. Now, one of the things about them is, is very interesting is that we think of uh, nesting birds uh, usually nesting when the weather is warm and nice and lots of food out there. Great horned owls start nesting in December, folks. They have already got babies. They've already feeding young. As a matter of fact, the young are quite covered and down. This is a, a young great horned owl here. He's about the same size as the adults. So that's a, you know, they, they are when they fledge. Oh, that's a barred owl. We're not going to do him just yet. Oh, we're going to do get back to him. Let me find this picture I've got here that Mary took of a beautiful, oh, here, great horned owl nest with a young. Um, this is what you should be looking for right now. You know, you're riding down the highway, you see an old hawk's nest up in the tree where the leaves are all gone now. Great horned owls typically don't build their own nest. They just take over an old hawk nest that's uh, available to them because the hawks aren't nesting yet. So uh, this time of year, look for a little head sticking up out of these big nests on the sides of the roads that you can see up on one, or down, up and down 152. I know that there's a couple of active great horned owls nests right now. So uh, this is kind of what you see with the adults who are attending the nest. And these, they, these tufts on their head are just for decoration. They don't serve any purpose, um, but they get the name from that. And their call, they're the proverbial hoo 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 deep throaty, the hoot owl is what most people know them as. And they are very common. Uh, luckily for a lot of species, they're not as common in the urban areas. Uh, so uh, the discretion owl, which we'll talk about in a minute, finds refuge and nest in the cities away to get away from great horned owls because great horned owls will both eat almost every owl mentioned in this program. Um, they catch them at night. So uh, the great horns are mainly from the edges of the cities out um, and, and usually in mixed woodlands, so open Apache woodlands with trees. So um, they're, they're a very adaptable bird and they're, they're very, very common. So uh, the next most common owl, probably, well, probably the most common owl in Missouri especially if you live anywhere near water, it's the barred owl. Now this, this is the bird, the bird name that confuses most people. Everybody seems to be uh, familiar with the barn owl, uh, which is you know, named after the structure, the bar a barn, and they confuse that name with this bird. This is barred, B-A-R-R-E-D, and there's named for the barring on the chest. And these are very, very common in any wet area. So if you have a creek or you live near a lake or you near, live the Missouri River especially or anywhere like that, barred owls are quite common there. Um, they are the who cooks for you, who cooks for you all call that you hear at night. And whoo, 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 whoo. you hear that, that is this guy here. This is the barred owl. And the one that really gets people is when two males get close to each other, the edges of their territories, and they start cackling back and forth. It can sound like a couple of monkeys going at it with the hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. And people will call me and say, I've got hyenas in my yard and things like that. So um, those are barred owls. They eat snakes and they eat frogs. They eat slow-moving fish. When I was with the conservation department way back in the early 90s, I had a guy call me one time that had a barred owl that was eating his koi in his pond at night and he was trying to figure out how to keep that from happening. He had to net the pond because the barred owl was eating these expensive fish every night for them. So um, they are a, a really neat bird and they are fairly common in Missouri and they're cavity nesters. Now their cavity that they nest in tend to be where a big limb has broken off a tree 
and it's created a hole in the tree and that's where these barred owls like to nest and that's very common in sycamores and things along down along creeks and streams which is where you know they nest most frequently now we do have uh, this is a, a, a new a barn a barred owl box that we now carry that emulates that situation where a, a big enough hole up in the tree that you can get bar, barred owls to nest in them. So uh, we're currently out of them, but, but they, uh, this is a new structure made by a guy up in uh, Michigan came up with this. And so uh, we've had some success with those. So we, we like those. Um, the, the, ne the next owl that we're going to talk about comes in two distinct colors. Um, and, and they're very small. And, it, it, and pe this bird always gets called a baby great horned owl or a baby something because they don't expect a full grown owl to be six inches tall. And this little screech owl is, uh, the eastern screech owl, this is a red phase. They come in two distinct colors, red and gray. There's a brown phase, but we don't see that very often. But they're, they're red and gray phase screech owls, and they're tiny. And their name, again, in the confusion in the bird, in, in the bird world and names and and associations. People think the screech owl makes this horrid, horrid call, a song, a sound, but they don't. They're just a little, I would call them the quiver owl. It's just a, I don't have enough wetness in there, is the sound, that quiver up and down sound. But they are the owl that is most commonly nest in urban areas. Uh, I work with a guy on, a, I had worked on an owl project in uh, the mountains of Virginia one year and he was tracking one of these birds with a radio collar on it and he drove into a neighborhood because that's where the signal was coming from and the signal was coming from a garage that the garage door was up and a man was in there working on a table saw in the garage so he walked up to the guy and he said you know have you seen an owl that need to come through here and he said no and he looked up and that screech owl with a tent was sitting on the rafter above the man working on the table saw in his garage so they will live in busy, you know, urban areas and, and not be bothered by that as much. So, uh, and they are also a cavity nester. Now these all obviously can nest in much smaller cavities than the bigger bar, the barred owl. And we've had some luck with that. A friend of mine had this uh, the, over at her house, which is very close to the store here a few years ago. Uh, Lisa had the, uh, uh, the screech owl's nest in the screech owl box. Uh, this is also a box that can be used for American kestrels if you put it in the open area. But this is a little gray face adult screech owl. Let's see, we've got a couple more pictures here from that box. And this is one of the, the owlets, the babies, that is sticking his head out of that box that year. Um, so they, you can get them to nest, and, and, and are, especially in urban areas of all the owls, this is the one that you're most likely to get if you make an attempt to get that. So they mainly eat insects, especially obviously in the summer months, in the winter months, small mice, small birds. Um, they usually catch them on the roost at night. They're not actively hunting like a falcon or anything to catch catch birds, but they usually catch them sleeping at night, and that's when they kill them and eat them. But you know, they're not very popular with chickadees, so they, they you do a screech owl song, and the chickadees go crazy in the smaller birds because they don't like them. So now, great horn, barred, and screech are by far the more the most common three species. But we also have in the area we also uh, it, it much less common as the barn owl. This is the barn owl that many people know the name of, and they make a horrific sc uh, screech sound that sounds like someone being hurt, as they say. And, and uh, this one scares people a lot because they hear that at night, and it's a very haunting sound. Uh, the lucky thing, well, not say it's lucky, but it's not. They, they're very open country birds. They like uh, barn structures, open structures, and open country prairies. Um, and we don't have a lot of that around here. You, you, to get barn owls, in this area, you have to look really hard for them, and it has to be in very open country. Their, their greatest predator uh, is the great horned owl. They, they, when trees grow into an open space uh, and the great horns move in, they tend to eat the barn owls, and the barn owls are run out. So uh, very prized to see, see barn owls. They call them monkey-faced owls. You can see that face is really unique, um, really cool. Um, the others that we get occasionally um, is the, the long-eared owl. looks a bit like the great horned owl. Uh, very uncommon in our area, and the uh, opposed to the short-eared owl, which is another of the open space prairie birds, um, very uncommon. And in some years, if we're really, really lucky, we get the snowy owls. Uh, this year we've had a few snowy owl sightings around the area, um, an amazing bird of the Arctic tundra, of course, and um, they move down every so often in the, in the winter 
months and we get a chance to see them. Terrific bird. Um, uh, if you do see them, please don't approach them and try to get really close up pictures and scare them. They're under enough stress when they're here as it is. So um, if you like the programs, please share them, like them, uh, send them to your friends uh, and send ideas for new ones. Until then, we'll see you next week. Come on, let's talk birds. Two, one. Would you like to learn more about wild birds? You might want to hit that subscribe button.